Hey everyone, Dan Thompson here, Wise Money Tools with my best buddy, <laughs> Devon Kennard here. We're down in Phoenix, having some fun talking. So what I wanted to kind of highlight today, or at least one concept anyway, is this concept of leverage, okay? Um, people call it debt, some mm -hmm. people call it borrowing. But think about when you, when you bought your house, what'd you do? Did you, maybe you paid cash, but right. most people use a mortgage, right? No, yeah, I, I finance it, yep. Yep, and the reason why we do that is because we can use other people's money and get a rate of return on their money, Exactly. right? So tell me a little bit about how, you know, like some of the real estate that mm -hmm. you do, if you use financing or if you just use all cash, what do you, what do you typically do? Uh, so when I started out, a big thing for me is I wanted the cash flow. Um, so I actually were buy, was buying homes in the Midwest for around $100,000 per home. So I bought homes in the Midwest for about $100,000 and I was paying cash for them actually just because I wanted the dollar amount of my return to, to be higher. So my actual cash on cash return was like 8%, but that's because I was buying these properties all cash. But what I've learned is you got um, using leverage just allows that to speed up even more. So now my strategy is more so is I want to like there's good debt and there's bad debt. When you're when you're not paying for that debt and you're you're buying it but you're getting a rate of return that is is high enough to uh, you know counter that debt, then that's the way to go. So uh, I, I firmly believe you know using leverage in a smart way is is essential to growing your net worth, to growing your your assets, and and putting you in a position to buy more and more. Yeah, and totally agree. And so when we go back to like 08, 09, when stock market, real estate, everything crashed, it's really interesting because leverage is like a two-edged sword, mm -hmm. right? It amplifies the good, right? but it can also amplify the bad. And we saw a lot of people in 08 who were stretched out um, to the max, and then housing prices fell, and especially for like builders and stuff, banks do what's called a a mark to market. Well, actually stocks do too. Mm -hmm. Basically it says, hey, your house is worth less than you owe us now. Right. So either pay up or we're gonna come get that house. So we we love leverage. What we really like it is when you have an asset that can't go down, which is why we use the life insurance, <laughs> yeah, right? Absolutely. Because then there's the O eights come along, the the dot com crashes and we don't have to worry about the downside. But I was thinking about this the other day right now because of the way real estate is. You can go out there and find money for, you know, three, four percent and maybe put 10 or 20 percent down, use their money. And the appreciation of these houses is going through 10, the roof. Yeah. <laughs> 14 percent. And now all of a sudden your rate of return goes from eight paying cash to Double digits, Double digits easily. Yeah. And that's like the key. And what I've realized and once you start to use leverage, uh, you know, right. But the, pr the problem is with some people is they out leverage themselves and, you know, their LTV is maybe too great. They, you know, they, they're asking for for too high, too high of loans and where they can't afford it or if they if things do go bad like 08 now they're having trouble paying the bills and, and making things so there's there, you have to find the right balance and know where you're at financially and using a, a, the appropriate amount of leverage so that you're always kind of in control and you're not just hedging on oh it's always going to be perfect because when it's not it's not and <laughs> um, not. <laughs> and and uh you know i, I feel like that's something I, i'm kind of risk averse so i try to try to you know use leverage but not to be so out leveraged to, to where something could go wrong and now i could be you know um you know upside down. Up, upside down on on properties or any kind of investment so um understanding that balance and it, it could be different for everybody if you have a lot of cash and um and you might be able to weather a downstorm. You might be able to to use leverage a little more than somebody who's like, I'm betting on this going right, and it doesn't, and it um, and something does go wrong, and now they're now they're screwed. So that's that's really important. If you if you're kind of reckless in using leverage and, and using debt, then you could uh, put yourself in a bad position. Yep, absolutely. Well, that's a that's a great commentary on leverage. If you want to see how it works specifically for life insurance and how you can leverage into stacking policies, getting into double digit returns and all tax free. We're happy to show you that.